Filters and massive fans in the Orca plant in Helisadi, Iceland, capture carbon from the atmosphere and store it below ground in basalt rock, where it can be mineralized. The plant has been built by the Swiss company Climbworks using technology from another Icelandic company called Carbfix. We have this box where we have a filter material inside. The filter material has a high affinity to CO2. This means when we blow air through the collector, the CO2 sticks to the filter material and we keep on blowing air through. When the filter material is saturated, we stop, we close the box and we start heating. We heat with low grade heat up to approximately 100 degrees. And while doing so, the CO2 is released from the filter material and can be pumped out of the collector. This way we clean the filter material, we collect CO2 and when this step is done, we open again the lids and start blowing air through. This heating creates the high-grade dioxide, which is fed into the basalt rock needs and uses energy, but CASA says this is provided by renewable sources. We are committed to use only renewable energy, so we don't want to emit CO2 while capturing CO2. We also did a, a quite thorough uh, LCA, so life cycle uh, analysis, in order to understand how much CO2 are we emitting while capturing CO2. And the plant we have in Iceland, it's, uh, so its efficiency is higher than 90%, which means that for one ton we are capturing, we emit about 10% being 10% uh, is re-emitted, so we emit about 100 kilos. According to Climbworks, the plant has a small physical footprint and doesn't compete with agriculture for land. A plant like this can be constructed in any country with renewable energy and storage conditions. The technology we are using today is carb fix. So this is uh, diluting the CO2 into water, which is then pumped down the earth. The advantage of this is that it mineralizes really fast. However, there are many other uh, ways how you can store CO2, and it's also done. So there are many investigations, for example, in deleted um, oil fields or in saline aquifers. Um, there, there is a big uh, project in Norway, which is called Northern Light, where they are saving um, CO2 in saline aquifers. In Iceland, the aim is to extract 4,000 tons of carbon from the air each year. Oka is stationed opposite a giant geothermal power plant that sits over Hengil, an active underground volcano that last erupted 2,000 years ago. Dozens of giant ducks carry superheated steam from the depths of the Hengil to the turbines to generate electricity. There are no plans as yet to convert the carbon into a byproduct. The technology is still too expensive for that. Carbon capture is a broad term, it encompasses a large number of different technologies. So we've got um, recent high profile announcements about essentially sucking carbon out of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere through a range of technologies called direct air capture. Um, they have um, uh, similarities to, uh, if you like, a much older set of technologies called carbon capture and storage, which don't suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere as such, but actually capture carbon dioxide from the combustion of fossil fuels in things like uh, industrial manufacturing plants, in coal and gas fired power stations. And that carbon capture and storage technology has been uh, a bit of a disappointment in terms of the rate at which it's been able to be um, piloted, demonstrated and scaled up. You know, does it make sense to spend billions on demonstrating and proving carbon capture plants for gas-fired power stations or coal-fired power stations when we've got renewables producing, proving themselves in terms of cost reductions and penetration to electricity markets. However, Gambir believes plants like Orca do have an important role to play when it comes to tackling climate change. My view from research that my group has been doing recently is that there are greater benefits to focus carbon capture in the industrial manufacturing sector rather than the power generation sector. 
uh, and that we should also have a very, very keen focus of carbon capture um, uh, from this sort of direct air capture so that we should actively be developing this direct air capture technology, which has the advantage that, you know, not only is it something that we can do in parallel with decarbonizing the world's energy system, but it also may help us do something very important later in the century, which is actually draw down excess carbon dioxide from the atmosphere if, for example, we overshoot um, our international temperature targets. <laughs>